Montante flower. It's in all right. Hey, good job, Jack. Let's get out of here. <laughs> whoa, whoa, Jack, wait a minute. I forgot something. I forget. The checker's pad! Hey! Jack, get over here! Come on! <laughs> Now let's go. I got it, Snoozer. The rare Montante flower. With this little baby, I will be able to build my greatest invention yet. A trampoline that can make you bounce 100 feet high. But Checkers, where are we going today? Now, I was thinking about that while I was in the woods gathering a flower. I thought we should talk about forest animals today. Forest animals? That's right. Animals that make their home in the forest. What animals are we talking about today? We'll talk about that in a second. We're about to take flight on our reading road trip. Seatbelt. Check. Backpack? Check, check. All right, snoozer. Ascending in three, two, one. And we're off. Autopilot activated. Checkers, where are we going? All right, snoozer. I'll give you three hints again. Are you ready? Yes. Hint number one. It's outside. Hint number two. It has many different kinds of animals. And hint number three, it has a lynx. Lynx? Oh, wait a minute. I know this place. Is it a wildlife center? That's it. That is correct, Snoozer. We are going to a wildlife rescue center, a place that takes care of all sorts of animals and inspires other people to do the same. That's a nice thing to do. Animals are cute. Well, remember, Snoozer, it's not just about helping the cute animals. We should be helping animals regardless of how they look. Animals, they serve a really important purpose, and it's our job to make sure we're treating them with respect and stewardship. What is stewardship? Stewardship basically means to watch over to take care of something. But anyway, this place has all sorts of amazing animals. It has the lynx that I mentioned before, but it also has porcupines, skunks. Don't worry, these skunks don't smell. It has bobcats, foxes, and a wide array of different birds. And the bird I'm most excited to see today is the owl. An owl? <laughs> Woohoohoo! I love owls. They have big kahuna eyes, just like me. Sometimes people think I'm an owl. That's funny. I would have thought people think you look like an elephant. Elephants don't have big kahuna eyes. Silly checkers. 
Anyway, it might sound like fun to live with foxes and owls and all those other animals we talked about, but it's really a lot of work. You've got to take care of the animals, take care of them when they're sick, clean them, make sure they're healthy, all sorts of stuff. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of work. How do you think they work that hard? Well, Snoozer, the people that work in these wildlife centers are really passionate. That means they really believe in what they're doing. And when you really believe in something like that, it might be a lot of hard work, but they love it. By the way, what is a bobcat? Is it just a cat? Not exactly. It's kind of like a cat, but not the kind of cat that you'd have living in your house. Why not? Well, you know what? I know somebody who knows an awful lot about bobcats, and that would be Zot the Robot. Hey, Zot, can you give us some information about bobcats? Zot the Robot at your service. Activating excited voice. Bobcats live in forests, mountains, woodland areas, and deserts. Bobcats quietly sneak up on their prey and then pounce. They live alone except when they mate. Each bobcat has an area of land that it protects. Other bobcats avoid this land. Bobcats have one main den in their territory and several smaller dens. The main den is often in a cave. Smaller dens might just be a few rocks or an old tree. Goodbye. Thanks, Zot. Well, what do you know? Who knew bobcats should be so interesting? Checkers, what is a prey? Prey is an animal that is attacked and often eaten by a predator. Well, in this case, the bobcat would be the predator, and a mouse that it eats would be its prey. Checkers, am I prey? <laughs> no, I don't think a bobcat would want to eat you, Snoozer. Besides, bobcats aren't that big. They're probably about twice as big as a normal domestic cat. Woo, that's good news. Yeah, there are so many animals that live in forests. Of course, we've got deer, we've got rabbits and turkeys, but also animals like skunks, raccoons, and owls that only come out at night. Hey, let's pull up the map and see where we're going today. We are headed for Rainbow Way. Once we cross through the rainbow, we'll be right at our destination, Hawk Creek Wildlife Center. Along the way, we're gonna get a health tip from Dr. Dan and your teacher, Mrs. Hamilton, is going to do an owl craft with you. Yahoo! My owl is going to be as beautiful as a Sistine Chapel. <laughs> well, maybe, so. hey, Snoozer, here come the books. Check out a few. What's the button for that? Oh, it was that one. What'd we get this time? Here you go, Snoozer. Batman comics? Batman. Oh, I know that. Well, bats sometimes live in forests, so that must be what that's about. And the kissing hand. Kissing you! What? Let me see that. Oh, it's raccoons kissing snoozer, so it's not as gross. Oh, good. Anyway, I know this book pretty well. It's about a raccoon mother who kisses her baby raccoon son's hand so he won't feel lonely when he goes off to school. He will always have a piece of his mother with him, and because of that, he won't feel alone. And that's a nice message because our moms, dads, grandparents, and whatever adult person looks after us cares very much about us, and even when they aren't around, we carry a piece of them with us. The other thing that I think is just spectacular about this book, especially for today, is that it features all kinds of forest animals. What animals? Well, I'm not going to give the whole book away, Snoozer, but there are a bunch of forest animals. But speaking of forest animals in this book, let's talk about owls. I think it's about time for your owl craft. What do you say? Oh, good! That's right. All right, well, let's bring on Mrs. Hamilton and create our owl craft. Well, hello, Snoozer. Are you ready to make your craft? Of course. Well, today, we're going to be making an owl, and it looks like this. Oh, boy! All right. So, there are actually three pieces to this craft, so you're going to need all three of these sheets. And once you have them all printed out, we're going to cut them out. You need a little glue and a little scissors, and then... We're ready to go, so let's get cutting. I'm gonna start with the big owl. Oh, 
Okay, that was a lot of pieces, but this is gonna look mighty nice when we're finished. So, I always set out my pieces, so I have everything set and ready to go. I got my eyes, put the beak about here, and of course, you're gonna make this your own. This is, oh, there we go. So you can have the wings go this way, or you can bring them that way, it's up to you. I think I'm gonna do it like it is in the picture. And these are the feet, and we got ourselves the body, and how could I forget? I need this piece first, silly me. All right, so now I got an idea, okay. All right, let's get our glue out and get working. So I'm gonna start with this oval piece. I'm gonna put some glue around the edges, there's two ovals, but this one goes this way. So it fits on the face. That would look kind of silly. So I'm gonna put that on. And this is the owl's belly. The feet on. And then you have yourself an owl. How'd you do? I did it like this. Look, he's waving his hands in the air like he just doesn't care. Oh, that's great. Well, I had a real hoot making this owl with you, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Did you know? Trees can live for thousands of years. Some trees can grow up to 328 feet. The trunk of a tree is protected by an outside layer of bark. Planting trees can help prevent erosion. The library has tons of books about trees. Visit the library to learn more. Wow, great work, Snoozer. You're right, the owl does look a little bit like you. So, what are these Batman comics about? That's right, let's talk about those. Well, bats are another forest animal of sorts. Bats can hang out in all sorts of different environments, but one of the places they sometimes live is in forests. Now, Batman is a superhero that dresses like a bat to scare criminals. The original Batman comic came out in 1939, and it was called Detective Comics number 27. The character was so popular that Batman has numerous iterations across different forms of media. Now, Batman's been a cartoon, Batman has been in movies, video games, theme parks, all over the world. He's a very cool character, and because there are so many different versions, you can try any one of them. Now, when we go to the library and check out different books with Batman in them, we'll see that Batman is drawn in different ways by different artists, and that's one of the appeals of the character. I do like Batman. I like his cool gadgets and his secret bat cave that goes under his house. But I prefer Bat Snoozer, the greatest superhero of all time. Watch this. Pop! <laughs> Forgot about Bat Snoozer. You solved any mysteries lately, Bat Snoozer? No, it's been a slow couple of months. You know what? Why don't we change that today? I've been thinking about a toy that we should talk about. It is right here. The Imagine X Super Surround Bat Cave. This is the secret cave that Batman works in. In the Batman comic books that we discussed today, this bat cave is under Bruce Wayne's house. Bruce Wayne is Batman's secret identity. This cave is absolutely huge. It has all sorts of gadgets, vehicles, trap doors, three jail cells, and Batman's supercomputer. It even has bats hanging out inside. Well, this toy looks so cool that I think we should take a closer look. All right, Snoozer, get ready because we are headed into the toy realm. If you would like to email Checkers and Snoozer, send your emails to checkers at checkerslibrarytv.com. We always look forward to hearing from you. This is incredible! Ah. 
Wow, it's really cool seeing this stuff up close. So these must be all of Batman's suits. Hmm. Hey, Snoozer, look at this. Snoozer? Whoa, look at that! The Batmobile! The Batboat! The Batwing! The Batcopter! Hmm, huh. where did he go? Whoa! Huh. Wowie! Cool holding cell! It's enormous! Hey there, little vacuum! Hey! I'm not just a vacuum, I'm Snoozer! Whatever your name is, uh, be a good boy and open up this door for me! No way! I know who you are! You're the Joker! I'm not letting you out! No way, Jose! Aw, come on! I just want to cause a little havoc, that's all! Mm-mm! Nope! Grr. Nice work, Bozo! Well, mind your own cell, you big block of ice! Will you two quiet down? I'm trying to plan my perfect escape. Oh my gosh, look at that. And there it is, the giant computer! Oh, there you are. What do you say, Snoozer? Want to sit in the bat chair? Oh, this is going to be great! I'm going to push some buttons! The Riddler is the Checkers! Computer. The computer is talking to me! Whoa! I wonder what this button does. And this one! And that one! Hey, be careful. I don't know what all the buttons do. And this and this and this and that and that and that. Starting power reset sequence. <laughs> Snoozer, what did you do? Power restored. Alert. Alert. Intruder detected. Snoozer, what did you do? Ah, oopsie. Do you know if anyone was in the jail? Oh, dear checkers. I opened the jail. We may have just... Accidentally! ...freed all the villains. I'll handle you later. What happened? They're gone! No time to explain, Robin. Seal off the exits. Commencing lockdown! Checkers, what do we do? Well, they are just toys. I say we let it play out. <laughs> this is going to be fun. <gasps> hey, checkers! Not now, snoozer. We've already caused enough trouble. Let's just stay here. No, look! I see the bad guys! Where? Over there! I just broke our stuff out of storage. Let's go. Snoozer, you stay here. I'm gonna go tell Robin. Going somewhere. <gasps> uh oh. Prepare to be frozen. Hey, two can play at that game. Hmm, mine's bigger. Whoa! Ugh. Oh no! Ahem. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> you can't win, Joker. Oh, this is so exciting! It's just like I'm watching a Batman movie! I completely agree. Aren't you forgetting something, Batsy? What? What is he forgetting? Shh! Me! 
Vectra! That's not how it's supposed to go. Snoozer, I have an idea. And now, before I take over your bat cave, let's see who's really behind that bat mask. Uh. <laughs> Vacuum cleaner. I am Bat Snoozer, the greatest superhero of all time. Full power. Ah, ah what is happening? Oh. <laughs> that tickles. Stop it. Yes. Allow me to break the ice. Well, Snoozer, thanks for capturing the Joker. Even though you were the one to let them out to begin with. Sorry I played with your computer. It was just so cool. Well, looks like playtime's over, Snoozer. We better be getting back. Very nice to meet you both. You guys are some cool toys. Cool what? Oh, never mind. Let's go! And now, the question of the week. Who is the smartest person you know? My best friend, Colin, is the smartest person I know. My brother is the smartest I know. The smartest person I know is Dada. Who's the smartest person you know? Me! <laughs> Who's the part, smartest person you know, Harry? Me! Who is the smartest person you know? Me. The smartest person I know is my mom because she is always trying to teach me new things. Thanks for joining us for the Question of the Week. Well, that was quite something, Snoozer. Oh boy, that was fantastic! Now I want to read more Bat books and other Force books. Hey, Zot! Any other books? Zot, the robot at your service. Today's selections are... Owl at Home by Arnold Lobel. Forest Magic, a guide for little woodland explorers by Sarah Grinder. Owl Moon by Jane Yolen. Exploring the World of Owls by Tracy C. Reed. There Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Bat by Lucille Bolandro. A Week of Raccoons by Gloria Whelan. Books Featuring Forest Animals. Goodbye. I just remembered something very scary. I saw something on TV one time about forest on fire. Do you think Dr. Dan knows anything about that? It's a great question, Snoozer. You know what? Let's ask that to Dr. Dan. Hi, Dr. Dan. I wanted to know if you know anything about forest being on fire. Yes, Snoozer. I know a lot about forest fires. Now, as a doctor, I spend a lot of time keeping the community informed about fire safety and making sure we're always practicing good fire prevention. But I'm also a volunteer firefighter, so I've spent time fighting fires myself and want to make sure everyone practices good forest fire prevention. Now, as you guys have seen on your adventure so far, forests are home to many amazing animals. These animals rely on forests for their food, for their shelter, for their water. It's just where they live. And if we have lots of forest fires, all these homes of these animals burn down and these animals might not be able to survive. That's very sad, especially because most forest fires can be prevented. Dr. Dan, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. I am a superhero. My name is Bat Snoozer, the greatest superhero of all time. I want to save the animals in the forest. How do I help the animals? Well, since it's summer, we're going to be spending a lot of time outside, and sometimes we're going to have campfires and bonfires, and that's all great. It's lots of fun. 
but we have to make sure we're doing our best to prevent that from becoming a forest fire. When you have a campfire or a bonfire, make sure you're always watching it. Don't leave it unattended. And make sure when you're done having a fire, put it out at the end and make sure there are no flames left at all. Also, when you're setting up a campfire, make sure you're away from any houses or any structures that might start on fire if there's a wind or a breeze or anything like that. And of course, never play with lighters, matches, inside, outside, or anywhere else. And snoozer, last but not least, if you see a fire in a home, or in a forest, or anywhere, what's the number we call? 911! That's right, just making sure you know. All right, snoozer, enjoy the rest of your trip. Bye-bye, Dr. Dan. Well, thanks, Dr. Dan. Wow, well, that's some great information about forest fires. That's a really important topic, so I'm really glad that Dr. Dan taught us about that. I agree. I can't wait to see a real owl. Right. Oh, <laughs> snoozer, we're at the rainbow. Well, if we're going to cross through Rainbow Way, we need to be wearing our safety suit. Let's push the button and change into our safety suits. Going through the rainbow. Stay tuned as we check in with the library. Hi, I hope you're enjoying this episode of Checkers Library TV. It's always a fun show to watch, isn't it? Well, I wanted to let you know what's happening at the library this week. On Thursday, which is July the 1st, We'll have another session of Read to the Dogs. We had a good group of people here last time, and so we hope that you'll call ahead and sign up to come and read to a furry friend. They love to listen to you read, a, read them a story. And also on Thursday, you can check online in our virtual story time, Books About Animals in the Forest will be online, and you can watch that too. This week, too, your July take and make bags are ready for you, so you can come in Pick up a new bag with a lot of fun activities and crafts for you to do at home this summer. So we hope you'll come and get yours. And keep reading and filling out your reading logs and coming into the library to get your prizes. We'll see you next time and I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode of Checkers Library TV. And now it's time for... The Joke of the Week. Well, we're here. Let's head inside the Wildlife Center. Hey, Checkers! Let's go over there! I see porcupines! Sure. Here you go, little guy! Hee <laughs> hee that tickles! You're really hungry. You must love grass. Why do these porcupines look different? So we have two different species of porcupines here and their quills are different. So alfalfa and prickles here do have, um, you know, they've got the short insulating hair and that's what keeps them warm. They've got these long guard hairs and that's their warning system. If something touches those, they know something's close to them. And then they have those quills underneath all of that. They have over 30,000 quills and those quills are hooked on the end like a fishing hook. So if something is trying to hurt them, say a fox or a coyote is getting too close to them and tries to get them, they'll tuck their head down, flare up their quills and start swinging their tail around. Hi, Prickles. Quill over here, our African crested porcupine is built a little differently. This guy doesn't have the hooks on the end of his quills, but his quills are very, very long. And this guy does not climb well. So he spends his time on the ground and digs huge burrows. If something comes and tries to bother him, like a lion or a jackal or a hyena, he will go headfirst into his burrow and flare out this huge squirt, this huge skirt of quills, so that the animal won't be able to make contact with him. He's just going to get those quills in their mouth. Cool, thanks. <laughs> Snoozer, there's the lynx. She looks a bit tired right now. 
We'll leave her alone. Hi, Foxy! In this area, we have red fox and gray fox. The red fox is more common, it's larger, and people tend to see them more often um, because when you come across them, you see them running off through the field to get away. The gray fox people don't notice as often because they're a little bit smaller, a little bit more elusive. And when you start coming up on a gray fox, he doesn't run away, he climbs up the trees. So gray foxes have more curved nails than any other canine species. And that allows them to be incredible climbers. So they will be out there and they will go right up the trees. And unless you're a birder that's looking up into the tree, you're not gonna see them. I wanna see him climb. Whoa! Nice! Snoozer, we're officially in the bird area. Time to meet the owl. Just turned eight weeks old. So in just, in just two months, he went from hatching out of his egg and being this big to his adult size. So what's all the, he's got all this like fur on him. And yes. I'm, I'm so right now you see this beautiful mix of all these pretty smooth feathers are his adult feathers. All of these really fluffy, fuzzy ones, those are his baby feathers, his juvenile feathers. So he's still in that transition phase. He's just starting to fly, things like that. Is he gonna look like this when he's older or is he gonna change? He'll be he'll be very smooth when, he, when he's an adult. Okay. So he won't have all the fluffy stuff and he'll have slick, tall feathers that look like horns on top of his head. So when you look at him, one of the things you're gonna notice is how big his eyes are as soon as he turns his head back around. His eyes actually take up two thirds of his skull space. So his eyesight at night is incredible, but it means there's not a lot of room left up in his skull. So when compared to something like a crow or a raven or a parrot, these guys are gonna be a little lower on what we consider the intelligence scale, but their instincts are remarkable. They are incredible hunters and they are silent hunters of the night. They have very soft feathers, they're fringed on the edge like a comb, so when they flap their wings, they don't disturb very much air, so they can fly silently. They have great night vision because their eyes are so large, they just need a little bit of moonlight or a little bit of starlight and they can see perfectly well. And they have incredible hearing. So you can see it kind of looks like he's got this little dish around his face kind of cups his face. That's what's called a facial disc, and that helps him have really good hearing. It acts like a satellite dish. He can move his head around. You can see he's bouncing yeah, his head around. He's got a great mobility. Yeah, so when they're doing that, they're getting the sound equal in both ears because one ear is higher than the other. And this little disc around his face, just like a satellite dish, helps funnel sounds to his ears so he can get a better signal and he can find out where a sound is coming from. Now, I've heard owls can turn their head completely around. Is that true? Pretty close. They can actually go three quarters of the way around or 270 degrees. So he could look forward, look at me, look behind him, and look at you going one direction. Once he gets to that point, he's going to have to stop and turn back around the other way. Right. And they can do that because of the number of bones they have in their neck. So humans have seven. A giraffe with its big long neck still only has seven neck bones. This guy has 14, so he has twice as many neck bones, which lets him turn his head really far. Aw, a real owl. Checkers, I want to talk to him. Hi, eagle owl. You have big kahuna eyes, just like me. That was quite a cool place. What did you think of the wildlife center? I'm so happy we had to visit this place. It was full of different kinds of animals. And the workers are very nice people. And now we know more about forest animals. Animals that are living in forests all around us. We know a little bit more about how we can help them out, take care of them, and watch over them. And make sure we're treating them with respect. It's a great thing to know about. And you know what? Pretty soon, we're going to be going on another trip and visiting with amazing animals. Checkers! Where are we going? Snoozer, you know it's always a surprise. But the next one's gonna be a fantastic reading road trip. Whoa!